In today's episode, history of the first Rubik's Cube World Championship, interview with Blake Thompson, a bunch of new 4x4 world records, and a giveaway of the Chi Yi Megamix. Hey, Sean here from SpeedCubeView.com with the SpeedCubeView podcast. This is episode seven, I think. I'm starting to lose count. Now, I already recorded all of this, and then something happened, and halfway through the recording, it started recording over what I already recorded, so I'm going to do this all over again. The interview with Blake Thompson's fine. We did that a few days ago, so this is just going through all of this stuff. Now, um, let me actually go through some questions first. I'm going to do that just because there's a few questions that... I decided to use in the interview and we just talked about that together. Now, if you want to send in questions for the show, go to the website speedcubeview.com, hit the podcast tab, and there'll be a place to submit questions there. Or you can just go to speedcubeview.com slash podcast and they'll go right to it. So a couple of the questions, there's only two of them here. And the first one says is from Jack from Idaho and says, how long does it take you to memorize new algorithms? I still can't remember all of the last layer algorithms and state variations after two weeks. I got the first two layers down within two days, just wondering if my memory sucks. So without knowing you personally, I don't think your memory sucks. Now, I don't know if you're talking about a beginner method or trying to learn like all of the algorithms for last layer for CFOP doing like two look last layer. So if you're just talking about a beginner method, um, then learning those last layer algorithms, there's only three three really, kind of four, I guess. The way I teach it is there's one to orient edges, which is the F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. There's one that orients corners, which is the D, R prime, D prime, R, D that you do over and over again, like if you're inserting corners. Um, then there's permuting corners, which would be just like an A perm and permuting the edges. So there's about four algorithms. If you're talking about like more advanced, like two look last layer, uh, first, let me address, though, the the getting the first two layers down in two days. If that's what you're talking about, I don't think you quote, got the first two layers down within two days because there's always more to learn. There's always new things to find out, new algorithms to learn, um, different ways of inserting pieces. There's always things to grow with that. As far as the last layer algorithms, it could take, you know, for me, I remember it took a couple, a few months of, like, constant work. Every day I picked up the cube and sometimes for an hour just, just worked on things, constantly doing the movements. Remember that as far as memorizing algorithms, you're really not trying to memorize the the letters. You're just getting it into your muscle memory. Um, if you ask a lot of cubers and ask what, what are the letters for, I don't know, let's say an R permutation, they might not be able to recite it very fast, but they could move it with their hands much more easily. So that takes time. I know people who've been cubing for years who still don't know like two look last layer. And it just, it's something that you have to keep doing, keep doing repetition, have fun with it. Don't get frustrated if you can't remember it, just have fun doing it. Now this, only, this other question I'm gonna answer from Zachary says, what do you average two through five? I'm gonna first say, I don't like answering this question because it's something that I feel like when people ask that, they're, they're, it's sometimes a way to judge someone else on, you know, am I faster than that person? And the, the reason I don't like talking about it is because I don't care so much about my times. Of course, I'd like to, you know, be faster. Who wouldn't? But I'm constantly trying new methods and learning new algorithms just to try new things. So, and that's especially on three by three. I stopped doing CFOP for a while. I did Roo for some time, did ZZ, then it became color neutral. And... My times were faster in January than they are right now because I wanted to try new things. Um, two by two, I use Ortega. I have no plans right now to learn CLL or EG. So my times on a good average of five is around four seconds. Um, and competition, don't look at that. I had twice I did a competition. But the first time I messed up uh, the PBL two solves in a row and the other time I, I think I got two DNFs. So... Hopefully the competition in less than a week, I'll do better. <laughs> um, three by three, I have some solves in the nine second range, but my average is usually the low teens. But depending on what method I'm using, that changes. Uh, four by four, 
I have some solve between the 40 and 50 second range, average usually slightly below a minute. And 5x5, that's been just crazy. I really didn't pick up 5x5 until a month or two ago. And so just a month or two ago, I would have solves in the 3 minute 30 second range. And just a few days ago, I had two solves almost in a row that were like a minute 55. So we'll see what, what happens with the competition. I've, I still am all over the place with that. I might not get below the cutoff within the first two and then just have to like stop. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of why I don't like answering it. My goal is not to get fast. My goal is to learn new things. And yeah, I, I feel like when people focus so much on what times are and trying to get just better and better and better as far as times, it's going to get more and more frustrating because those times are going to get harder to beat. Okay, so that's enough with questions. Like I said, some of the other ones are going to be in the interview. Let's talk about some new puzzles. The big one that I think just in the past couple days people are talking about a lot is a new Yushin Megaminx. It's cheap. It is really cheap. Like, um, I don't know exactly how it's going to range in, in some of the U.S. stores because when I'm recording this, it's not quite out there yet. But it's even cheaper in this one site than the Chi Yi Chi Hang S Megaminx. And the Yushin one, I don't think it's supposed to be a budget one. It's supposed to be a really good high-end puzzle, and the couple people that have tried it say it feels great. Yushin has done this sort of thing with their prices before, mainly the 5x5. When they came out with their 5x5, many people right away said it's the best 5x5 on the market, and it was like half the price of any other one out there unless you got a Shengshou. And automatically other companies had to drop their prices to just compete at all with that. So this is kind of a good thing. I think it's going to cause other people to have to bring the prices down. I'm sure the companies that are competing don't think it's a good thing. Yushin also has a budget 5x5 coming out. Um, Yushin Cloud is what I see it's being called. If you get a stickerless one, I don't know if it's going to have the regular shades. It might have pink shades with it. The design looks pretty good. Um, but like I said, again, this is a really cheap 5x5, so it might be a good budget one for people to have. The outer layers look wider, so it's kind of similar to other popular ones that are out there right now. The Chi Yi Chi Hang S Megaminx is their frosted Chi Yi line. It's sculpted like the main one. I think I talked about this last time, but it is officially coming out and I should actually have it maybe even today when I'm recording this. Maybe actually the actual video might be out before the podcast does. There's a new 4x4 Pyraminx from Lan Lan. I, it honestly looks the exact same as the Shang Show. I'm, I ordered it, so we'll see how it performs. The Shangsha one isn't anything special. It's just, um, it moves well, but it, it doesn't have any aligning mechanism. It doesn't really corner cut. It it does what it's supposed to do. You know, I don't think anyone's speed solving with it. But wait, I'm sure there's people speed solving with it, but it's not an official event. One last thing that looks kind of new is the Cyclone Boys 2x2. One place I'm looking says it's called the Flying Fox or the Fei Hu. Now, this one has concave pieces is what they're calling it. It's like the sculpted Megaminx. I don't know why. Um, I'm sure it, it's going to feel really nice to use, but something like the Megaminx almost needs that because with the angles not being 90 degrees, it's sometimes hard to hold on to and sometimes harder to grip faces. Since this is 90 degree angles, it's much easier to grip pieces. And I've never had issues with with turning aside in a 2x2, two two, it's just accuracy and recognition. But we'll see. I'll get it in. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping a lot of puzzles try different things like that. Like the the concave um, skew is really fun to use. I, this is probably the first skew I've actually just enjoyed using. Now let's talk about some world records. First off, 4x4 four four world record. This was the craziest thing. It was the world record was beaten three times. I don't know if it's the same day, but at least the same weekend. So first, I believe the first one was broken with a twenty one point two six second single from Yi Fan Wu, and then just later on that day from Sebastian Weir, it was nineteen point four one. Now this is the first four by four single official single that is under twenty seconds. Later on that weekend, Felix also broke the world record, but he didn't beat Sebastian's time, and he got a 21.23 single. So still a great time, and it's second in the world now, 
But in, in that video, when after Felix got that time, people were asking if it was a world record. He's like, no, no, it's not. Uh, Sebastian's video is really cool. Um, someone did a screenshot where he stopped the timer, and the cube is still in midair. Like, he let go of the puzzle, stopped the timer, and it, it wasn't even close to touching the ground yet, which, it's legal, you just have to have your hands not touching it when you hit the timer. So, really cool. He also got the new 4x4 average world record of 24.01 seconds. There were some other 4x4, um, there's the Oceanic record from Felix with 25.81, and the South American record by Pedro Henrique of 30.84. Some other world records, the Mega Minx single by Juan Pablo was beaten 29.93 seconds. This is the first Mega Minx single under 30 seconds. He also got the average of 35.15 seconds. There was the Pyraminx single world record of 1.28 seconds by Benjamin Kyle. And a new 7x7 mean world record from Felix Zemdegs of 2 minutes, 18 seconds, and 0.96 so some big ones being broken that week. Now before we go any farther, the Rubik's Cube World Championship is less than a month away. And so I decided let's talk about the first ever World Championship. This took place in 1982 in Budapest, which is where Erno Rubik's teaches or is from. And it was actually the only official World Championship until about 21 years later in 2003. Now there are other competitions, but the WCA was not formed then, and they just retroactively added that one into place. The way it was run is completely different. There were judges, but the judges kind of just made sure things went smoothly. So Erna Rubik's was one, there was some people who ran the toy company, and people didn't bring their own puzzles. The way it was set up is that Erna Rubik's had them make a special Rubik's Cube, or a special few of them for the competition, that were supposed to be much nicer. Most people said they were nicer. There's been... Uh, Jessica Friedrich has said that she wasn't a big fan of them, but uh, I haven't tried it. They were Rubik's Cubes, so they were not the speed ones that we are used to. Now, there was one person from 19 different countries that represented each one, so it wasn't just anyone could show up. There were different trials to get in, and the countries that were represented, there was the U.S., Netherlands, Hungary, Sweden, Japan, France, United Kingdom, Canada, Italy, Czech Republic, Peru, Belgium, Yugoslavia, Germany, Finland, Portugal, Poland, Bulgaria, and Austria. The way the competition worked was it wasn't that you did an average of five like it is today. You did three solves, and they picked the best of your three solves, and that represented your time. The way the inspection worked was a little bit different, too. You had 15 seconds, but they unveiled the cube. You had 15 seconds to look at it, and then when the 15 seconds was up, you had to put it down, and someone covered it up. So it was kind of like you had the full 15 seconds, and then you got to relax for a second and just think about what you're going to do. For the solve, though... When they pick up the cube, there's a sensor that automatically starts and stops the timer. There was a power issue during the competition, but the timer still worked because it was battery operated. If your cube popped, you were allowed to do another solve. So that had happened. There was one person from Finland where it happened twice within the same solve. And so at, or, or at, there were two solves and both of them had a pop. So that was a DNF. There was one person from Italy where his popped halfway through the solve and he put it back together and finished the solve anyways. First place went to Min Tai from the U.S. and with his second attempt, which was 22.95 seconds. Now remember, this is just with a regular Rubik's Cube, not a speed cube, and it wasn't like today we can go online and look for tutorials. A lot of that was figured out on their own, figured out through um, different like I, things published in magazines, but they didn't have the methods that we, we have right now. Some other recognizable names, there was Lars Petrus, who had a 24.57 single, and Jessica Friedrich came in 10th from the Czech Republic with a 29.11 single. You can actually go on YouTube and watch the a few different videos of the championship. And it's really interesting to see how they turn the puzzles because it's a lot of wrist movements. Um, I, I have a an old blocky Rubik's Cube and I can still quote unquote finger trick it. So I've heard people say that it's just because the puzzles were older. I'm wondering actually, I, I would like to try one of those out and see how they feel and how they turn. So that's that for the Rubik's World Championship from 1982. Let's go on to the interview with Blake Thompson. Hey, so I'm here with Blake Thompson. He just got a 4.86 single, which puts him fourth in the world, second in North America, second in the United States, and first in Michigan. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for having me, sir. So you're first in Michigan. Who's who's second? Oh, Rami Spahi. Um, it's kind of like an ongoing thing because uh, we've traded the single and average for Michigan uh, quite a bit, and so mm-hmm. we kind of just like poke fun at each other. Obviously, like state ranking isn't anything that's like officially ranked or. Uh, really just anything important but we just kind of joke around about it so that's that's why that's in the description <laughs> <laughs> yeah drew is first right now right yep um and recently you had a, like a final round neck neck with him yeah yeah um that was one of philip lewicki's competitions that was that was pretty cool yeah um i think it was one of the first times that um we've had like back-to-back fives in uh, like a final round, I think he couldn't let been... you just have that. I think so. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you because you got it, and then he immediately followed it up. Yeah, I believe at like the Asian or uh, maybe China Championships. I don't remember which one. Um, there were two fives in a round because obviously like Mats and Felix mm-hmm. and some other crazy fast people are there, so it's pretty much inevitable. But uh, it's uh, it was a pretty small competition, so it's pretty funny. At small competition like that you get two fives in one round wait is it <laughs> is it pronounced mots i believe so i'm not completely sure but, okay uh, i've got to make sure i don't I say wrote. mats anymore like that's that's really exposing the michigan accent right there yeah i mean <laughs> whatever works i guess yeah <laughs> so okay and you used a volk three for the record right yeah and i'll put a little shout out from cube depot usa um uh-huh. now was <laughs> it magnetic um, it was, and it doesn't feel very nice at all. Uh, <laughs> I kind of made it by myself, and I believe I ordered N35s, like the standard on eBay. Mm-hmm. And I think they just threw in whatever magnets they felt I'd be okay with, and assumed I wouldn't do anything about it, which I didn't. But uh, they feel way stronger, and it, it's just not a very good cube, but I still do okay on it, so I use it. <laughs> but <laughs> Are you going to be yeah. switching it out, or are you just going to keep running with it? Um, I've been really liking the GTS recently, mm-hmm. but I haven't found one that I feel comfortable using in competition. Um, cause I, like, like I said, the Magnus on my Volk are very strong yeah. and I think, uh, I do a lot better with like, like stronger magnets. And mm-hmm. so, um, I don't know. I've been trying to like mess around figure out which one I like best, but, uh, right now I'm using the Volk and I'll probably switch that out eventually once I feel like. I find a cube that's better for me. Well, I'll bring a few GTSs. I like the ones that come stock are the um they I don't know what the exact strength, but they're not that strong. So I made ones that are a mix of like N fifty and N thirty five together. Okay. Um and that's really that. nice. So yeah. yeah, I'll be at Gamma. I'll I'll throw some of those in. I'll be there too. <laughs> awesome. Um so before we go into some other questions too, so you are in the top one hundred in the country for single and average for all events. But there's one thing you you don't have. That oh, I... can I guess it? What what is it? Oh, um, okay. So clock? No clock. I believe you're in the top 100. Really? Okay. Um, uh, hmm. It's actually you don't even. I didn't. I didn't see it on there because they were all DNFs or DNS. Oh, blind. Yeah. What are you going to count? do blind? Um, I don't know. I just haven't like i know how to do it and everything it's just like i give up too easily like i get through memo and i'm like i don't really remember what i was just doing and i just stop (laughs) i so uh i find myself just not remembering the very last one like i'm doing corners got that down do edges and then i get to the last one i was like okay and that one's there and then i do the whole solve and i was like oh (laughs) no what was that one so that that messes me up but i've I've done some untimed ones, but mm-hmm. I just haven't bothered timing it. And I've competed a few times just for the heck of it, but uh, never gotten a success yet. Maybe maybe eventually. Do, do it at Gamma. <laughs> They've, they're doing blind there. Oh, yeah, true. Maybe I'll have to uh, get like a sub one or something. <laughs> Be the underdog. <laughs> yes. Um, so as far as solving, when you're at home, um, I, we'll just stick to 3 by 3 for a second. What what are your solve times like at home? Like was is that four point eight six your fastest? Is that kind of near that? Um, so I actually have another four. I believe it's a four sixty seven. Mm-hmm. Um, got that a few months ago, I believe. But uh, four eighty six is definitely something that doesn't come very often. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I get like a maybe like a five. Um, 
once every like two or three hundred solves or so. Okay. Um, so Same they're here. definitely not very. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just like a pretty smooth solve that ended up with the PLS game because I had two other fives that mm-hmm. um, I think they were both full step. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just a matter of time before I get a really good F two L and finally a PLS skip. So yeah, yeah. Was nice. I was I was walking through the reconstruction. There was a couple a uh, couple extra U twos and U primes in there. Yeah, I think. Okay, this is gonna sound really ranty, but <laughs> people, a lot of people commented on the solve, assuming that I was going for world record or mm-hmm. something of that sort. And that's not really what I'm aiming for. I'm just aiming to do like what's best for me. Mm-hmm. And if I worry about imperfections in my solves in the past, mm-hmm. like what's the point? Like, yeah, unless you improve on those, there's no point in being like, wow, that could have been faster. Just like be happy with what you got. And yeah. that's exactly what I was. I mean, so. everything could always be faster. Like a lot, oh, yeah. all solves could. And it's, yeah. It yeah. just sucks that mine was much more obvious, but <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like I'm I'm completely fine with the time it as it is. Like mm-hmm. um, obviously, like Felix deserves a world record much mm-hmm. more than I do. <laughs> Even though it'd be kind of funny if I got it, just because like 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 I said, like the underdog. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, like I'm not worried about it. Like, are you going to know. nationals or worlds? Uh, I'm going to nationals and. Most likely not worlds unless some kind of miracle happens mm-hmm. because plane tickets are pretty expensive and uh, traveling across the country is something that is very difficult to convince my mom to let me do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you, I'm going to kind of jump from there. So you helped um, get create some algs for ZCCT, the the TTLL. Yep. You are one of the T's in that TTLL, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> actually uh i think it started at like indiana 2015 because mm-hmm. uh, i was one of the few people chris knew who was learning zvll um mm-hmm. along with him and i told him how like most of them i generate on my own and so uh he told me he, he just absolutely is terrible at generating alex so i was like okay well if you send me some alex i'll help you out and generate some and see if you like them and so um i did that for a while and then he told me about uh ZCCT before it was officially like released yeah and uh he said he was pretty busy and so he sent me like one of the subsets of alex that uh maybe a few but um that he hadn't finished yet and so mm-hmm. i just generated them for him sent them to him and he was like okay sweet i'm done now <laughs> how, how do so you come that's... up with how do you create alex like that uh so there's a program called cube explorer and you uh you put in the state of the cube mm-hmm. and uh basically just like spears out a bunch of alex and that's basically how it works. I, I don't know much of like the, <laughs> the backdoor aspect of like how the actual programming works, but uh, that's what I do. I put like whatever state the cube is in. It's kind of like a like a paint palette. Okay. And you put in the stickers, um, press add and generate, and then it spews out a bunch of objects like crazy fast, and you're like, whoa, okay. And you can also uh, um, like reduce the amount of sides that are involved. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want any like B turns or um, D turns, you can eliminate those and like lower the uh, number of alex that spews out because it's kind of intimidating. <laughs> yeah, isn't most so. of the TTLLs just like two gen? Um, I think one or two subsets are two gen. I think all of them are like RUD, okay. uh, so three gen. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah, most CPLLs though are all crazy, like all over the place. But uh, luckily, uh, TTLL is like all. Gen, so it's much easier to like simplify well i'm still okay I, actually on that i'm still trying to figure this out what does gen mean what does it come from oh it's just uh short for generate um when you're basically that's like the process of um putting or taking the alex from cube explorer like putting in state of the mm-hmm. cube taking the alex and you call it generating okay so, yeah <laughs> okay yeah. um Oh, one more question that I have before I go into ones other people asked. So your YouTube channel is X Blake Thompson. Yes. Was Blake Thompson not available? <laughs> um, I believe not. I don't know. I think I just didn't want my name on YouTube to just be Blake Thompson because this was before um, Google Plus was incorporated. Yeah. So you couldn't have like uh, like spaces in your name or whatever. So I was just like, man, Blake Thompson's too bland. You, you got to just throw that X in front of there. So that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, 
your first competition was june of 2010 when um so this transitioned to a question from jacket i can't even pronounce that name but um from instagram <laughs> yeah. when did you start cubing um okay so should i just go into like how i started cubing also that a little tangent perfect yes okay okay sweet so uh so it started off my sister got a cube and I kind of put it in that same category because really I didn't know what a cube was before. I just knew like it was overly complicated, <laughs> at least I thought. Yeah. And so I thought it was one of those like, you know, those puzzles that are all like the same color, all the pieces are the same shape and you're supposed to put it back together. You know what I'm talking about? Wait. Like all... there's like crazy difficult puzzles that nobody would ever want to do. They're all the same colors and the same shapes? Yeah. It's like an actual like puzzle. I have no idea what this is, but go on. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, so I thought it was like one of those that are like supposed to just like piss you off. And I was just like, okay, well, I don't want to deal with that. So <laughs> for some reason, my mom decided to get me one as a birthday gift. Mm -hmm. uh, probably also to piss me off. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I think I tried learning it pretty early on and gave up. Mm -hmm. And I was still like, I was already in the YouTube scene, um, just from like previous hobbies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I looked it up, and some of the first people I watched were like me, myself, and Pi, and uh, I don't know if you know them, but Monkey Dude thirteen thirteen. Yes. Um, they were pretty big at the time, um, and so I, I watched their videos. And even though I couldn't solve it, I was like, "Man, there's some cool things you can do with this." And uh, so I think I believe I ordered a Mega Mix and a Pyraminx before I even knew how to solve a three by three. And I ended up figuring out a method of the Pyraminx, not just like. Oh, I'll solve a side and hope it works. Yeah. Uh, I, I figured out like a two flip valve and stuff like that. Um, so I was really proud of that. And I didn't even know how to solve a three by three. So I was like, man, I'm a, I'm a born professional. No, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, <laughs> I, I didn't solve the Mega Minx before. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it was, I, I stuck to it and I was like watching the YouTube videos and stuff. And I think in August of 2009, I figured out how to solve a three by three. And, uh, I started practicing, uh, talked to some people online, and uh, I think, yeah, June 2010, I went to my first competition because um, they weren't as common at the time. So um, I think it took like, well, actually, there was one in Michigan. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, April 2009, I believe. Yeah. Um, in, actually, in Detroit. I think it was Gross Point. Um, okay. But I didn't know about competitions at the time. So I didn't go to that one, but uh, but yeah, uh, went to my first one, June 2010. I uh, I think my first podium, you'll you'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> my first podium was at my second competition, and it was with an average of 18.50. That I need to just go back in time and start solving cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It really brought up my ego. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm, I'm good at this, apparently. And then I went to my next competition. I think it was Nationals. I was mm -hmm. like, I take that back. And I, that was just a fluke. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy going to competitions. And, and yeah. Yeah, definitely. Compet as competition scared me at first. And I went to one. I was like, oh, this is people are just having fun. Like, it's not yeah. competitive, really. Um, I mean, it was a lot different back then, too, because I think that competition had, like, 30 or 40 people. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, most of the Michigan competitions have around, like, 100. Yeah. I, I think the next one, um, not Gamma, but the Michigan 2017, I think the limit's, like, 220. Oh, wow. So, so yeah, it's crazy. That'll be fun. Um, <laughs> so you talked about other hobbies. That someone, mm -hmm. uh, Bellman from Instagram, asked, what are your other hobbies besides cubing? Um, so... It's kind of loosely related to cubing, I guess. If if you're talking about like cubing in, in respect to like speed cubing, mm -hmm. um, I really like non WC puzzles more so than most people at my speed. Yeah. Um, What's I your don't favorite? Know. I, ooh. Um, so I have the Bauhinia dodecahedron. What is it? I don't it? know if you know that one. It's a uh, Bauhinia dodecahedron. It's kind of similar to the Aton Star. Okay. Um, but it's like transparent purple. I got outline stickers from all of our stickers. It's really cool. I, I don't know how to solve it yet, but uh, I really like messing around with that one. And also, like, the, the planet cubes. Okay. Um, those are kind of cool. But uh, also, uh, I like learning languages. Uh, I I taken French for the past five years of high school, and, uh, or, well, 
one year was in middle school. I didn't drop out of high school or anything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I plan on learning another one eventually. I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to start up because I saw I saw you were doing some Duolingo. Yeah, so, doing, so yeah, getting back into French as well. Yep, yep. I did two. I mean, years. your last name. <laughs> yes, my last name is French. Although I can't put that accent de gu on the e to make uh-huh. it say bou- to make it say bouquet, so uh-huh. people just assume my name is like Bauki or something like that. <laughs> um, the well, the funny thing is, I stopped typing the accent on websites because it would change it. It would either take it out, um, so it would just say b o u c k, or the strangest thing, and it's not just one place did this. They would change the e with the accent de gu to a capital A copyright symbol following it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know why it would do that, but multiple places do that, so I just can't do that anymore. So I'm officially, like, bulky. <laughs> is it... What is it on the WCA? I don't remember. Um, I think it's just B-R-U-C-K-E. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to check that out now. I'm curious. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I... I know that happens with some, like, Asian characters, mm-hmm. um, especially on Kimi USA. But, uh, but yeah, I never heard of it happening to me for like normal accents. Because I think uh, Borja Perez, I don't think you know him, but uh, he has the same accent in his name. And mm-hmm. I think he uses it on the WC. I'm not completely sure. Yeah, but I believe so. Right now, it's it's just the E. I mean, legally, there's no accent on that E. It's just an E. So I, oh, I, really? Yeah, I actually, um, going into me now, uh, I, uh, I changed my last <laughs> name to that in 2009. Um, oh yeah that was that was my mom's maiden name i changed to that and so i had to go to court and and like tell them why and um they started asking if i was trying to get out of like paying student debt and stuff like that (laughs) um and yeah i wasn't allowed to put the accent on it or they just never or the whoever was filling out the paperwork said i couldn't so oh yeah so legally it's not there interesting i didn't know that okay but um oh so did you ever do cup stacking uh, so, so I did, um, the, the truth has come out. Um, I started it before, <laughs> before I did cubing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't remember how it started. I think I saw like a commercial and just like ordered the cups online, but, um, I did that for a while and I kind of liked it. Um, and I think I went to two competitions. I think one was in 20... 2012 and 2013 maybe mm-hmm. um just kind of for the heck of it like i figured i, I can do it and actually um i don't know if you know him but mason langendorfer um i met him through that and i don't know if he was starting or i think he was already cubing before then mm-hmm. but i think that was part of the reason why he started going to competitions so that's kind of my claim to fame i guess but uh but yeah they were pretty fun i definitely prefer cubing um yeah. but uh but yeah it's it's a nice pastime. I mean, yeah, it's I, pretty repetitive, but <laughs> I tried cup stacking, um, <laughs> but it didn't really work too well with the cups from my kitchen. So I, I oh yeah, yeah, just didn't <laughs> do that afterwards. Yeah, um, you kind of need like the official ones to do it properly. Yeah. Do you have okay? So someone asks, uh, T Town six two two asks, what are your goals for MCC Gamma? So I guess I'll answer this too. But I'll let you start. What What are your goals for Gamma? Um, definitely world record. <laughs> oh, <kidding>. um, <laughs> no, I I don't really have any. I guess like I don't go into competitions with goals because mm-hmm. most of my PBs at this point are pretty luck based. Yeah. Um, and so setting goals is kind of just setting myself up for disappointment. So <laughs> I I really don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess if I had to pick one, um, maybe like uh, improve my three x three average a bit. I feel like that's something that. Would definitely require some luck, but it would also be pretty nice. Um, also, uh, Chris Olson has been talking some some smack talk to me about winning, <laughs> and so definitely uh, taking him down is the priority, I'd say. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I don't really think there's much else. <laughs> okay, yeah, like because I switched to being color neutral, and so my times just mm-hmm. got way worse. Um, my average of of like a hundred is back to kind of what my average of a hundred was before, but it's not beating my my best my personal best yeah. of that um so for me i'm just hoping to to, to do not bad <laughs> like to yeah. not get out because there's some solves i do color neutral and i just get lost and i was like okay i need uh-huh. to keep doing this 
I've never done five by five, so I know for sure I'm going to uh, get my best at five by five. But I just <laughs> well... need to beat that cutoff. I mean, like, uh, I... what what is it? I forget. Two thirty. Okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> no, I, I just don't remember what they're at now. I mean, yeah, yeah. the because uh... sometimes they're like two minutes, sometimes they're two fifteen. Uh... Yeah, well, I picked it up because the like, my I was averaging over three minutes just about like a month ago. And mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, I've got to get better at this. And I just, and now I've got a couple solves under two minutes, but like yesterday I did a couple solves and the first one was like 250 and then it was 205. And I was like, this is, <laughs> <laughs> although yeah. I, I admit I am doing Hoya just because it's fun. So yeah, I, I like Hoya. I'm mm-hmm. just, I just started it pretty late. So yeah. I haven't really like stuck to it yet. Cause I know I'm probably missing a lot of like really cool tricks, but, uh, um, I definitely want to switch because reduction isn't really working out for me. Yeah. Being completely honest, like I, it's way too many pieces to look at during edges, and especially yeah. for like as quick of a pace as a solve, um, as it should be, um, it's very difficult to keep track of everything. And I feel like doing like Yawer Hoya would uh, would help with that whole bunch. Yeah, the initial the cross edges for Hoya is definitely a few extra moves, but it can flow really fast. Like I feel like I'm faster with that than I am with the final eight or the ones that just because i'm then it's looking and slicing it it's just i can flow yeah. really well with hoya i mean i'd even think about doing it until the first i think it was the first competition i was at um josh uh, Jahua rubix was there and i was doing yao for four by four and he pulled me aside and he's like hey you gotta switch to hoya try check it out like it was like this really secretive <laughs> thing I'm like okay i'll try this but it was for four by four not for five by five uh-huh oh okay okay that's interesting, because cause I know Yao is basically, like, the universal 4 by 4 method, kind of, so it's interesting that he would have made you switch. Yeah. Was there, um, like, something that you were doing very poorly, or...? No, it was just he was doing that and really enjoying it. Okay, um, just just for the heck of it. I feel okay. like Yao <laughs> is just the one because it's older. And then yeah. since the people who've been doing it for longer do it, it's it constantly is said to be, like, the one to do when it's yeah though especially in four by four the move counts even pretty much so it's just do you want easier cross edges or easier centers and mm-hmm. but that's a debate for yeah. another time <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i think yeah started in like 2011 but i think it only got popular mm-hmm. probably around worlds 2013 or so because i remember um I don't think I was using it at Nationals 2012, and I think that's when it started getting popular. I think sometime between those two competitions, it just like blew up and everybody was using it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go into, I've got a couple questions that are ones that were just submitted for the podcast. For me to answer, I figure we could just kind of chat about them together. Okay. Um, so Zachary from Kansas, is intuitive or algorithmic F2L better? So I'll kind of let you, I've got some thoughts on this, but um, oh. well, how would you respond to this? So I learned intuitively, mm-hmm. and that was a very long time ago. So I don't remember exactly how that went, but uh, I know at that point, that was like, um, what, like 2010, 2011 or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, intuitive was like universally like the way to go. Mm-hmm. And I never really understood what algorithmic was, <laughs> being completely honest. Um, and I don't know, I feel like Bad Mephisto is where I learned. Mm-hmm. I know there's other resources now. I, I assume you have a video. Yeah, I, I okay. have one on everything. <laughs> okay, I'm not that, qualified for I that, assume. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I don't watch them all because I don't really need to learn OLL again. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure Sean's tutorial is very good, but I personally... <laughs> Back in back in 2010, 2011, we didn't have a Sean Bukow. So, uh, <laughs> so okay, I learned Blail. from Bad Mephisto. <laughs> um, but yeah, I learned from Bad Mephisto. So mm-hmm. if, you, uh, if you feel like learning from there, I mean, the video quality isn't very good, but um, that's that's where I learned from. If you want to be exactly like me, you can do that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, I don't well, know, like, what are your thoughts? For, I mean, for F2L... Um, well, the videos I have on that even are just saying, you know, just, just mess around with the cube, see what you can come up with. Cause 
mm-hmm. there are algorithms like there was one at the last competition i actually don't remember it because i i should have written it down or but there was an algorithm you showed for one f2l thing and i was like that's awesome i need to do that because that's much more efficient than what i am doing uh, um, i think i know what you're talking about yeah it's when yeah. the pair is already in there but the corner is like twisted mm-hmm. um but there are some things that like I just I uploaded um, a couple walkthrough solves. Of, I I so reluctant on doing that because I don't feel like I'm qualified <laughs> to do walkthrough solves. But there's part of it where I utilized an open slot and inserted a pair so much more easily than if I stuck to doing an uh, an algorithm. And so uh-huh. it's like there are ones that can work, but when algorithm sheets are just like you have this one open slot in the front right, there's you miss so many opportunities. Yeah. I feel like it probably reduces, like, doing algorithmic, it probably reduces some inefficiencies where um, you could be saving, like, a bunch of moves by doing a pair differently. Mm-hmm. But I feel like for the most part, it's probably better to start with intuitive, kind of get used to how F2L works, why it works, and then maybe stick to algorithmic once you want to, like, um, like refine your cases, kind of get them to... Um, like algs you feel comfortable using instead of like awkward things where you're bringing both the pieces of the top layer, yeah. pairing them up, inserting them when really it could be a lot simpler. So yeah, yeah I don't know. And also um, Chris Olson's videos are mm-hmm. definitely very helpful for uh, like those little F2L tricks. Yeah, um, Those are definitely very useful. And I use quite a few of them. Um, I, yeah, they're, they're pretty handy and I use them in like, most of all myself is actually <laughs> yeah there's a couple things from uh chris olson's videos that i've i utilized all the time mm-hmm. um yep so another question viet i believe it's pronounced um so this is kind of just a general question can i use tracks 50k and mara lube in like together and i mean my response is of, of course i mean you can a lot of people mix them because then you can get kind of a lighter feel without it drying out so fast but yeah. i'm going to kind of turn this into do you have a set way that you lubricate your puzzles or set them up at all? <laughs> um, I ask other people to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds really arrogant, but really I, I just message some people on Facebook. Um, mm-hmm. Soon enough it'll come back to you. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, I mean, like you should put magnets in, I think it was like a Gans Air and mm-hmm. um, maybe another cube. And uh, Stanley Chapel's also pretty good at lubing cues. So sometimes I'll ask him. Um, Noah Dwyer. Um, okay. So shout outs to those people. But uh, yeah, sometimes I, I message them on Facebook and just say like, hey, I suck at setting up cubes. Do you mind doing this for me? Because all your cubes are great. Mine are awful. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I I have like some of those like fancy lubricants, like different weights or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they just never work out. I don't know why. Everybody like, everybody else's cues are so much better than mine. Uh, this it's is terrible. one thing that, like, I mean, there, the first time I ever scrambled 4x4 four four in a competition and I noticed how other people's 4 by 4s felt, like, I knew I was doing something wrong there. But this is, oh. like, <laughs> one thing for me that, I don't know, whenever I lubricate a puzzle, it's like, I don't know, this one needs to be a little bit, it feels too gummy, so I'll wipe some stuff. Like, I don't have a set thing and I just keep messing around with it. Yeah, um, I, don't know. I guess that... I'm just really impatient, and I'm like, okay, the first thing I do has to be the best one, and then mm-hmm. if it's not, then whatever. And so I, I don't have the patience to like wipe out the lube and like change it or whatever, like do mm-hmm. something with like a lower weight or viscosity or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like that's probably part of my problem. But I don't know. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm really happy with my GTS to the magnetic I made. So I'll you got to try that one. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely want to. <laughs> you, stickerless or stickered? What's the what would you prefer? Because I've got one of each to try. Okay, um, so for three by three, uh, well, I just got the GTS two M. I got like the Mo one, mm-hmm. and I haven't done much with it, but I'm kind of liking it. So I guess the stickerless, because I I really like the stickerless one more than this the stickered one for some reason for for the GTS two that that's what I feel is is my preference. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if. Like, you usually prefer stickerless, right? I am, I've gone back. Or do you go back and forth? Okay. Um, I, I went, I was going to do, like, all stickerless, and I was super pumped for stickerless, but then, um, I don't know what, oh, well, I, I realized I couldn't really use a GAN Air at all, because I was so used to stickerless that mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't get used to it, so I started going back and forth, and now I'm trying to change my colors up to where, 
like I replaced some stickers on one of the puzzles and I purposefully didn't change the blue or I grabbed a different red and tried a different one. So I'm, I'm trying to get used to things so I can be like cube neutral, <laughs> not just okay. stuck to one. Yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. even the, the more you yellow compared to what she uses seems so dull now just because I'm so used to, I've seen that the Valk one. Didn't they change it with the GTS too? No, Something that's still like that. the exact same. They okay, changed the I, stickers, I, but not the stickerless. I don't think they oh, did. Okay. Oh, oh, you're talking about stickerless. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I have like a, a normal Waylong V2 mm-hmm. uh, with the same shade. So, yeah, I don't know. I always kind of like these. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I think we need more purple. I think that's, yes. that's the key. The, I think every, every company just switched to the Sarah Strong color scheme. No, just my color scheme, man. <laughs> Wait, you have purple? <laughs> yeah. Um... I swap it with blue. Uh, it's a uh, light purple. Okay. I started it's, it back why? in like. Um, so my mom has like a pillowed V Cube three that she got back in like 2013, mm-hmm. and she got like back when Cube Smith was still a thing. Um, like the I think they had like a light color scheme, with something like light purple, light pink, light green, oh, light yes. blue, like that kind of thing, yeah. mm-hmm. and. Uh, I saw the light purple ling on the counter because I don't think she finished stickering it. And I was like, that would look cool on a cube. <laughs> and so I swapped it with blue, and then um, I kind of liked it. Like, it's it's weird getting used to, but when you think of it as just another shade of purple, mm-hmm. or another shade of blue, rather, yeah, um, it's not that difficult. So I I swapped it to that. And when I bother to re-sticker cubes, I usually s- switch it to purple. But uh, it helps to, like keep track of which cubes are mine and stuff and so i started that back in like 2015 2014 maybe and i just kept with it just just because <laughs> i'm gonna have to try that yeah okay good. i've got one more question um this very general this is from samuel from utah what are your plans for cubing overall what methods do you want to learn uh times you want to achieve things you want to do so overall question what do you want to do uh definitely get the world record <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've probably hit my peak as far as 3 by 3 single goes, mm-hmm. being completely honest. I, I mean, I don't get fours that often, so I'm going to need to be um, considerably lucky again in competition. But Well, um, and uh, for that, so TPS, like, do, do you know what you kind of average for TPS? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Probably somewhere around, like, 7 or 8. I believe the 4 was, um, shoot. I it was really eight point something. Few... Was it? Okay. Yeah, I was that just checking. It was eight point something. Because um, James Hildreth and I were talking about that, and apparently it's the third fastest TPS out of the other four fours in uh, or other seven fours mm-hmm. in in official competitions, which is pretty ridiculous. Because I didn't think it was that good of a solve, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, because I think a lot of the like limit comes to that TPS. Because that the the um, the reason I did the walk through, one of those walkthroughs, my average TPS is like four and a half, and mm-hmm. that one solve it was like um, almost six. It was like five point seven something. And so for me, oh, like okay. I felt like I was just going as fast as I possibly could. And uh-huh. maybe it's because I'm some super old and my fingers are not moving as fast. But but yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's where that limit is because there's there's some uh, there's some methods that are slightly fewer move count but like that that solve that was like something like a 40 move solve and okay getting below that um i'm talking about your yeah the four point four point uh eight six yeah, yeah. um <laughs> that the, yeah so it, it i feel like as far as getting records it's a lot of just getting those lower move count but keeping up some crazy high tps yeah, a big part of it is also um, like transitions mm-hmm. uh, as far as like um, between steps and also between F2L pairs. And I think that's one reason why uh, I think Felix and Mats were the two people who had a better TPS than me, which mm-hmm. completely makes sense because they have crazy transitions between their F2L pairs. Like you see almost no pauses in their solves, and it's absolutely insane. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's just like Felix. Like when you watch his solves, you're like this guy is not stopping anywhere. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. He's turning super fast, but he's not pausing. And um, I think that's, like, the the pinnacle of queuing. That's that's what, not exactly what you should aim for because it's kind of unrealistic for mm-hmm. the most part. But um, it's definitely, like, 
that's where TPS really comes into play, and uh, that's what probably affects it the most, like, making sure you're not pausing between F2L pairs, like, like once you're done with one F2L pair, you have to already know what you're doing for the next one, mm -hmm. and uh, that's something that, if the solve is easy enough, I can do, but I'm not perfect at it by any means <laughs> i have some solves that are absolutely terrible like i remember after the four my next solve was like a 13.06 oh. and that was just because like i started the solve and i did the cross wrong and i was just like okay well where do i go from here yeah like do i just do another side or what and so i don't remember it was just really funny because a bunch of people are recording me expecting something like equally as amazing to happen i'm just like okay 13 you're gonna start <laughs> getting mad at all the competitions now um, I don't know. Like, I don't expect people to know who I am. It sounds really modest, but I don't know. <laughs> Just start getting like, everyone to wear shirts with your face on it. Of course. Yeah. Um, we should get them printed. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. So any other goals then um, for other things? If you hit your kind of your, if you feel like you've plateaued, I guess, <laughs> three by three. Uh, <laughs> um, what are some other things and any other events? Or or actually, um, you talked about uh, non-WCA events that you like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of going off into a different question that I didn't even ask. Anything <laughs> that you'd like to see happen in the WCA with those? Oh, as far as like adding events? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, for the most part, I don't think many of them are too realistic. And... I'm sorry to be a real downer, but uh, <laughs> I I heard mirror blocks being mentioned, and I think a real problem with that would be like um, how tall the layers can be. Yeah. Um, I feel like that would be a, a big problem as far as like regulating the size and um, kilominks. I know that was a big thing for a while, and I don't know. Like I'm I'm all for like adding events because mm -hmm. that'd be kind of fun, but I feel like kilominks was just kind of hyped up. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was much different than Mega Minx, and like, there's already uh, I just not wasn't... much time to hit all the events at competition. So we're already yeah. Like, like this next the, the gamma is just like we are going to be rushing through everything. There's so much going on um, in one day. Yeah, I mean, there's not many competitors relative to most of our other competitions. But that's true. The thing is, a quarter of those competitors are like a part of staff or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, probably actually over a quarter, probably closer to, like, a third. So <laughs> I don't think we're going to have much of a problem getting help. So I feel like we should run pretty smoothly, and if we don't, then, oh, well. I mean, it'll, it'll be a fun competition either way, because, like, Kit and um, a bunch of other people are flying and are going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Olsen, who's, uh, man, I wish, no, no man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I'm just kidding. But... Are you going to beat him at two by two? Oh, definitely. He's going down. He doesn't even know what's coming. Um, <laughs> but uh, g going back to the non-WCA thing, mm -hmm. um, Team Blind was also thrown around. Um, apparently there's problems with like communication. Mm -hmm. um, like If you have too many people in a room and they're yelling things at each other, it's going to confuse other people and mm -hmm. it would just be mayhem. So that's probably not going to happen. Um, one thing I really like, I don't know if you've seen it before, but like the university cubing relay thing where you get like four people together at either like high school, middle school or college and um, you get four different scrambles on a three by three and hmm. uh, you start at the time where the first person does their solve, you give like a double high five kind of thing to the other person, they start their solve and it continues throughout the four people and the times like ranked amongst each other and I feel like some kind of like a relay type thing would be kind of cool. Okay. Maybe not like a two by two through four for a relay. That wouldn't really be adding too much. But uh, I feel like some kind of relay, like a team event, definitely would be very so cool. So not and, like the Guilford Challenge. Um. Actually, that's that's an interesting idea. Uh, I don't know. On a side question, like would... what's the Guilford Challenge? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, I believe it's you do. You gather like one, two, three, like however many people. I don't, I don't remember what the actual rankings are. Mm -hmm. um, and you solve every event that you can get an official average in, I believe. It was something okay. like that. Basically everything besides like blind and FMC. Mm -hmm. um, and you basically have like one cube for each event. And you and however many people just uh, 
solve the cubes in like a relay fashion as fast as possible. And so I did that with Rami. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's what the question was referring to. Yeah, but... that was. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing that, and that was interesting because because they said like, how hard was it or something? Yeah. And I was like, I was kind of just at his house. <laughs> Like, yeah, I didn't ask um, a question about how hard it was. Cause I didn't know how to ask <laughs> that. Like, yeah, it, I, I just find that kind of funny. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, it's it's pretty fun. I I really like the team events because um, I mean it's kind of a way to like interact with other people, um, kind of like teamwork and all that kind of fun stuff. And so I definitely like to see those be one of an official event. But uh, yeah, there was a video I don't know. of like four by four. I don't know what. Like not relay, but whereas you, Rami, and uh, Michael, you Cuba two, doing like a passing uh, a four by four round. That's right. That was like a team factory solve, I believe. Like I think we split it up. Um, each of us did like first two centers, pass the cube, mm-hmm. and then like the yellow cross edges, and then pass the cube centers, um, edges, and then three by three. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of fun. I don't see that being an official event because it's kind of hard to regulate because of like varying methods and stuff. But um, it's definitely a very fun thing to do at competitions. And um, yeah, I mean, I've seen people do it with like um, what, like ten people or something. Oh, it's just like <laughs> it's it's crazy. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. So I I definitely recommend doing that. Like if you're sitting at at a table at a competition, just be like, hey, do you guys want to want to do a team factory? Because it's a good way to like. Um, kind of like interact with other people that you might not know already. You can just make cube towers everywhere and that'd be good. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> when they fall, it's absolutely terrible. Because then you have a bunch of cube pieces everywhere and it's super loud. Oh, man. Speaking of which, you want to make a cube tower at Gamma? Yeah, we, we, we're, oh, we're doing that. <laughs> sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, thank you very much for being on the podcast. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me, sir. I want to thank once more for Blake being on the show. Definitely check out his channel. You can see some of his solves. I'll put a link in the description for YouTube. If you'd like to enter the giveaway for the new Chi Yi um, Frosted Mega Minx, go to speedcubeview.com slash podcast. There'll be a question. If you get the question correct, then you will be entered for the giveaway. And I'll I'll make an announcement or just at least contact the winner within about a week. I'll pick just a random winner for that. If you're listening to this on iTunes, please go to the store and leave a review. It definitely helps out the show. If you listen to this on YouTube, hit like and subscribe, of course. If you have any questions, stop by the website and you can submit them there. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you guys later.